Um, and the, the American Designers Gallery, for those of you who aren't familiar, was an early, um, was a group of, of artists, designers, uh, craftspeople, um, who banded together as a cooperative to, to exhibit um, modern interiors that were both modern, American and modern. And this was the first time that this had been done really outside of a, a, of a museum. The Met certainly had its exhibitions in other places, and also out of department stores. These were the, so it was an independent cooperative. Um, and you can see the uh, booklet that accompanied visitors, um, which was designed by Alanka Karaz. And in this booklet, um, it sort of features, you know, various rooms, including pores, um, which it describes as a bathroom of convenient and modern design. And, and it really was. Um, these wonderful light fixtures provide a little mood lighting. And then the uh, soap dish doubled as a cigarette holder. This interior survives uh, without the tub at Crow House, where it has served since 1931 as the family bathroom. Its resplendent shower stall is a, really a fantastic example of Art Deco. Um, and this bold nude recalls somewhat the nudes of Matisse, but also um, the figures of René Bouteau, who was a French ceramicist who did these kinds of voluptuous nudes at the time. I mean, you can see, you know, how the palette has really changed quite a bit. You have the, the beiges, browns, and kind of a rust kind of brown, and then really a brilliant blue and black. And this is a lot of sgraffito, all under the glaze, and textured tiles, I should add, so that you don't slip in the shower. You know, I don't because he does it in his, in his, in his home-based wares, too. And I think it's really a, a change in taste. I think he's looking at what's coming out of Paris. And, you know, these kind of muted, more somber palettes are in. If you look at carpets from the period, they're all beige. Um, um, and I should say poor conceived this luxury, and it really was a luxury bathroom, with the intention of reproducing it. Um, and Harbert also hopes that he might design tableware for the Trenton or another firm and in, earn royalties. His 1929 exhibit features a luncheon set, uh, wall pockets, ceramic wall pockets, and this really wonderfully enviable tiled radiator cover, pierced tile, and look at that lizard running up the side. Um, unlike the first exhibition, um, the, the 1929 American Designers Gallery was really more focused on affordability and also on um, the idea of, of showing prototypes that might be produced. Um, and Poor also designed the, the wood, everything is his, this wonderful kind of cubist table. Um, and paneling all out of um, tulip wood, local wood. And you can see the circular saw marks, which he left rough in, which have a really nice correspondence with the pattern on the plate. But, you know, I just look at this photograph and I have to laugh because you can really see just how warped his plates were. Um, and this, this in a publicity photo from the period. And here I just wanted to show you quickly, um, Poor did receive commissions for custom bathrooms. And this is one of the extant ones. And these are unfortunately just details, but it's a wonderful house um, called Chelsea. Um, and this was done for Mrs. Benjamin Moore not the painter, but the Benjamin Moore of Chelsea, the Christmas tale, and uh, for her children. So you don't see nudes here, but you see these really wonderful um, tropical plants and, and aquatic animals. This you know, looks like a catfish just coming out to bite you on the ankle. Um, and I should mention Chelsea is a house that was designed by uh, Delano and Aldrich, like the building we're in here. 
Um, Poor did send designs to Maddox. Um, these were, however, never pursued. Um, I think partly because of the stock market crash um, that kind of put an end to mass production of luxury bathrooms. And you know, bathrooms are the one thing that people don't often replace if they don't have to. Um, but by that time, you know, Poor had already heeded his his wife, and I should say his third wife's wishes. This is the one who stuck. Um, Bessie Brewer, a wonderful writer who, um, they were married for 50 years. Um, but she, you know, famously told poor, darling, it's time to get out of the plumbing business. <laughs> and with that, with the money they made on these commissions, poor and his family departed for a year in France where he would plot his return to painting. Of course, poor didn't really stop making pottery. After his hiatus in France, he continued to make pottery alongside, and at times intermittent, with painting, for which he was gaining increasing recognition. In 1932, he created really fantastic lamps and vases for Radio City Music Hall, um, the interior of which was being designed by his old friend from the American Designers Gallery, Donald Dusky. Um, the carpets, of course, uh, many of the carpets were by Ruth Reeves, another American Designers Gallery associate, also a neighbor on South Mountain Road. Um, these don't exist, at least I've never seen one. If they, you may know of one. They did exist, they did exist but they, the story goes they were all stolen or walked away um, within a few weeks of the opening. So if anyone knows of one in a closet somewhere, I'd love to see. Come talk to me. Um, He also did um, a few of these kind of unusual sculptural vignettes at this time, and these were exhibited at the Rain Gallery in Manhattan, which was Montrose's successor. Um, this is uh, Romeo and Juliet, which you can also see in the American wing on the mezzanine. Um, I don't think that needs explanation, but um, this one may, Ten Nights in a Bar Room, which is a a more obscure uh, theme for the time. It's, it's actually based on a mid-19th century uh, temperance novel. Um, and why he chose that? Well, it was also made into a film in 1931. And I have to think um, um, that there is a, a little bit of irony there because uh, this film was uh, d distributed by the um, Women's Temperance Union, and Poor was certainly no teetotaler. Aside from the figurines, these are um, slab-built constructions, and they show, you know, it's hard to know what he was doing exactly, but I think they speak to his friends, uh, his many friendships with writers and actors, playwrights. And also, um, you know, they kind of show his humorous side too, I think. Here's the back of the Romeo and Juliet, the stage set, the entrance and exits. Um, Poor completed a number of projects for friends, incorporating tile and sculptural elements. Um, this wonderful relief, uh, nude sculpture was part of the fountain that you see here in her kind of art deco shell and this was for a little um, garden pavilion we have the hudson river right down here um designed for ben hecht again and actually that chimney the the mantle that you were asking about is upstairs 